He does not get bigger than this. Olympia FC Warriors hosting Devonport Strikers in the final day of the PlayStation 4 Victory League. A win is Olympia's title ticket. They just need three points today and they will collect the PS4 Victory League shield. I'm Damien Gill from FFT, joined today by Nick Owen, who's taking the trip down the highway for what is a massive clash. Nicko. Yeah, I'm excited, Gilly. It's the uh, title, the title decider, really. Um, and, gee, there'd be some nervous blokes over underneath the uh, underneath the cover over there near the change rooms. Uh, the, the tight sphincters, there'd be... <laughs> George Mamarcus would be just... I'll tell you what, if they lost today, Olympia, what would happen? That's what I want to know. I'm going out the back door. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quickly scurrying out of here. Um, I, I wouldn't like to see the scenes if it is a loss today. Um, a, a good crowd in, you got to say. Uh, pretty much every Greek person in Tasmania piling into Warrior Park for what is a massive clash. They've been at the top of the table for the bulk of the season. It looked shot to pieces, to be honest, a couple of weeks ago when South Hobart knocked them off their perch. But uh, a win from Rangers put them back up there. And surely today, Nico, they get the job done. Yeah, I, can, I actually cannot see them losing today. Uh, Devonport, obviously fairly depleted. Uh, you know, they've got uh, Hingston, Eves, Holden out. And I don't, don't see them scoring enough goals to trouble Olympia today. We'll go through the Olympia Warriors lineup. Of course, they're the, the ones everyone's looking at to, to today. Uh, really, they've got to get the job done. And uh, if they do, nothing else can really eventuate today. Sean Lewis in goal, the American keeper, solid as a rock. We've got Fabian Gustafsson, uh, the Swede Swedish player. He's uh, Brazilian-born with a lot of flair, and it's actually going to be his last game for the club. He's going back to Sweden. He's got a uh, trial with a Nike camp, I think. So good on Fabian Gustafsson. He'll be looking to go out on a good note. Harry Woolley. Now, he's an interesting customer at fullback. He can uh, be a match winner or a match loser, depending on what mood he's in. He can... Often get a bit fiery and get himself sent off. So it'll be interesting to see which woolly mammoth comes out today. Shay Hickey, he's been the midfield maestro. He's been the pillar for them through midfield. He's coming across the Warrior Park this year, he's been sublime. Luke Isles, first-year player. He's going to be definitely in the reckoning for tonight's Rising Star Award. He's been superb. Is there an injury cloud over Luke at the moment? Luke Isles, crook, midweek, real crook. Um, but I think... He's all right. I, I mean, I think most people would do everything in their powers to be up for this one. Uh, Warren Wadawu, another interesting customer, maybe a little similar to Woolley in terms of plays on the edge a little bit, but a fine player nonetheless. Manuel Tsakiris, uh, the centre forward for the Warriors, in the golden boot mix, so uh, that's a bit of a side plot to today's action. He's uh, two goals adrift of Adam McEwen. One goal adrift of Braden Mann, so he'd need a fair old bag today, you'd think, to, to take home the golden boot with uh, Braden Mann up against Glenorchy Knights, who have bled goals in recent times. Hot favourite, Braden, for mine. Yeah, definitely. Nick Meredith, the lettuce farmer, one of our favourites, into the starting lineup with Nick Moons out injured, and last week he was sublime up there at Mitsubishi Park. Lachlan Nichols, well, he's just come in and been pretty well solid as a rock uh, Alex Holmes went down injured and they were lucky enough to have Nichols to call upon and he's partnered the next man on that list Jake Vandermeer to perfection I don't think Dimitri Nest is starting Ooh, could we, could we <laughs> and <laughs> Gavin Hoy on the bench imagine that a last day yep. Glenn McNeil goes Dimmy you're on mate Hoy. in midfield put Hoy. in a soft training off, on Thursday off night you, he's off, out off you go Hoy bring the keeper in no, so I think there's a slight mistake Gavin Hoy on uh, Dimitri Nesta on the bench uh, also, Christian DiMartino, Jack Callan, and Stuart Page. And that is the Olympia FC Warriors. On to your Devonport strikers, Nico. Talk us through them. Yes, uh, we've got uh, Tom Pearce in goals. He's had a pretty good uh, season in goals for a 17 year old uh, fellow. He might have just turned 18, but he's, uh, in keeping terms, that's pretty young. So he's had a fantastic year. He had a bit of a slip up last year with a couple of, uh, last week, sorry, with a couple of howlers. Um, but for overall, he's been pretty good. He's going to have to have a pretty good game today to see Devonport win. We've got Uluru, Chilcott, Josh Maskeel, Dom Smith, and perhaps Brody Denny playing in a right back position. I'm not sure. Um, Kieran Mulroney, Cammy Douglas, the rig. He got his rig out at last Saturday night at, the, at a function, club function, so it's still it's probably fading a little bit. He's losing a little bit of. Uh, 
shape in the abdominal region, but he's uh, still in the team. Bo Blizzard's having a wonderful year, the young fella. Um, if he's eligible tonight for the Rising Star Award, um, he's a pretty hot chance as well. Adam Gorey, Daniel Sison, and Mike Doyen Dyer, the young lad. Only a couple of subs. Yeah. Matty Jordan and Henry Rip one. Um, they'll be looking to get a bit of game time. Uh, the prophecy, I do like his work. Yes, I think tonight maybe he could he could go from prophecy to prophecy. <laughs> Uh, if he gets, if he stops anywhere along the way, he might uh, down a froffy or two. But who knows? And Henry Rippon, some cracking names in that team. Yes, no. Well, that if, if it was uh, based on names, we'd have won the league. Yeah, absolutely. So we get on to this is what it's all about, Nico. You see at the top of the tree, Olympia Warriors on 45 points, South Hobart on 43. So they need Olympia to slip up more or less today. Uh, South Hobart probably need a loss from Olympia because a draw would still see them needing to climb back a, a massive deficit in goal difference it's 29 is the advantage Olympia has on South Hobart so if South Hobart can somehow manage a 30 nil win over Glenorchy Knights and Olympia draw, who knows It's pretty impossible I would have <laughs> thought but uh, if Braden Man wins the golden boot by 20 <laughs> they're a chance Braden, um, Braden Man doubles up his yeah, yearly tally, tally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, pretty much looking at the ladder that's a bit metallica like nothing else matters um, Devonport could probably sneak in um, depending on results um, but I don't know if I'd want to another maybe another long trip down to Hobart the next week oh who knows anyway in charge today oh, I just sort of missed it there it's we go no no they're incorrect but they're it's, incorrect. it's Jimmy Hordle it's the big the big Jim Hordle loves a title decided does <laughs> Jimmy he seems to be in normal he was the ref of the year last year. Um, obviously, you've had some interesting times with yeah, him this no, year, he Devonport refere- boys. He refereed uh, Devonport versus South Hobart when South Hobart needed a win. They were going to probably win the league anyway. They had a few games up their sleeve. But, uh, yeah, a couple of penalties and uh, all, all sorts were going in the favour of uh, South Hobart. So, I don't know. I wasn't at the after party, but maybe Jimmy was. <laughs> Well, there we go. We're looking at the uh, banana slugs, as you like to call them, in their resplendent yellow. If you've ever seen a banana slug, that's what they look like. Yellow, top to bottom. Now, has Bobby Eves made the trip down at all, or is it No, Bobby had, gory? Bobby had the operation on his knee on Tuesday. Every ligament you could possibly think of, tendon, whatever. Um, he's been patched up, and he'll probably have the next year off playing as well, so he might uh, find himself in a coaching role. As we're talking over the top of George Mamarcus, most nervous man in Tasmania. He's doing well to hold his nerve on the mic, I've got to say. No little slip-ups. He's uh, sounding pretty confident. The Warriors, I think, Nico, let's get on to our tips. Oh, I think they'll be far too good for Devonport yes. today. I'm, I'm tipping them 4-1. I reckon there might just be one goal just to make the crowd a little bit nervous, but I think they're going to be far too good and they're going to win in the, the vein that's got them there. Yeah, I've gone 6-0 to Olympia. I think they're going to take the title emphatically. Uh, they might sneak an early goal, early goal or two, get the confidence down to Devonport, get their confidence up, and they'll run away with it, I feel. Um, they've definitely, it's almost... Um, they've, uh, they've had their share of sand kicked in their face, yeah. and they've come through. But I don't think they can say we are the champions just yet. Um, but they're pretty pretty damn close. I reckon it's in the CD player as well, just as a little bit of a, probably not as a slide on Devonport, but more as a little dig for uh, past days South Yeah, Homer. and their friends across the ditch. Uh, I, um, yeah, I think Olympia are going to be far too good, as I've said. Uh, Devonport appear to me to be limping to the line, more or less. Nico seem to be far from their best. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, the attacking play of, re- of recent times hasn't been great. The defensive's held up uh, nicely. Look at the vision of big Uluru Chilcott. Look at him. The beard's got its own postcode. Uh, you can see Panda Maskeel there. He'll be a star probably a few hours after the game <laughs> at the uh, league dinner. Uh, as you run down, there's some, we're not great looking, are we, really? This is the top <laughs> knot of Bay Blizzard. I did like Olympia's lineup despite not having Holmes and uh, Manns in the lineup. Um, so they've, they've still got a pretty formidable team as you see them go past there. Shea Hickey, full of confidence, full of beans. 
he's probably the key today, I, yeah, was, I, I was think, Gilly. Just someone with that experience to get them over the line where experience, the rest of the side's probably lacking in that title experience. Not that I know a great deal about them, to be honest, but at that top flight in Tasmania, there's probably not that huge experience there except for the the man, Shay Hickey. He's the man of Tasmanian football, really. He had the one year in uh, Glenorchy Knights, went back to his old club to see if he could pick them up a little bit. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, but he's uh, definitely back with a vengeance this year. Uh, yeah, well, I think he is the key because he's been there and done it before, hasn't he? He's uh, Not a lot of them have, so he's going to be uh, definitely a key for the Warriors just to get them through that nervy period. And I'm sure there'll be times where it'll be a nervy encounter. Um, they haven't been in this position a whole lot. Um, but uh, Shay Hickey's experience will be valuable Olympia, not a full strength. Alex Holmes out of the lineup. He had surgery and also uh, Nick Moon's out for a couple of weeks. But uh, their depth is such that it doesn't really matter, despite those two players being absolute quality. Just going to quickly mention Glenn McNeil. He's uh, in horse racing terms. He's probably a progressive type coach. He seems to be improving each year. Um, it'd be great to see. It's a bit of a fairy tale, really, with him being the captain of the last winning side. Um, he would be a very nervous man. He's probably got a. Oh, he'd just be ready to burst, I reckon. He could probably just taste the championship. He's gone to the engravers and made sure he spelt McNeil right uh, for the for whatever trophy he might get. But uh, oh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to just don't know what will happen. You never know. You never know what a banana slug is capable of. You don't know, Olympia. A lot of jinging up going on, Nico. And we are underway here at Warrior Park. Devonport with a kickoff. It's Smith on the ball. He drives along down the line, cut off by Woolley. Gets it to Hoy. The Canadian nips inside. It's picked up by Blizzard. Nudges it into the path of Mulroney. Dinks over the top. And it bounces away in front of Blizzard. Nichols there just to knowingly see it out. The throw in now as Devonport push forward. First real foray of the game. Comes to Mulroney. He fires a cross come shot that goes across the face. Kept alive for Dennehy for a moment, but then Smith sees it out. Yeah, a oh, nervous start by... Well, not a nervous start, but it was a long ball forward and Bay Blizzard put enough pressure on and just scooted across the box there. If Dennehy... I think it might have been Dennehy. He went at it with his left foot. He might have had something there. It's Chilcott hits the crossbar with the header. Panda Maskeel. Oh, that, that was, was nicely yeah, there. Sharp, wasn't it? Nadia Dominich gets dispossessed. And he looks like he might have fouled. No, Jimmy Hordle says no. As Panda picks the ball up and plays it wide. Out to Mike the Dayer. Nice little bit of interplay there. But they got themselves in trouble. This is probably a similar pattern to what's happened in the last few weeks for them. They play a nice few three, three or four passes. But then the final ball so it seems to get to uh, play with the back to the back to the play and then the then it breaks down as it didn't then. Yeah, I think Bo Blizzard's definitely a key. With the winds howling much like a blizzard. Maybe he'll be the man to, to step up, not just for Devonport, but for South Hobart. They're not necessarily just playing for themselves today. As it comes down the line, looking for Gorry, seen clear by Nichols. It's in the air, Mulroney wins. It's there for the rig, he's bustled into. Oh, play goes on. Sison brings it down. Rig Douglas guides it back to the pan. Amaskill, long and strong it goes. A high ball for Vandermeer to deal with. He does well. Makes it somebody else's problem, and it's Hickey who shoves it back with his head, and he's had untoward contact coming from Blizzard. And it's a quick free kick from Hickey. Shifts it centrally out to the left to Isles. He'll run and gun. Goes down the line. Finds with Dawa, who takes a, oh. a little slip in the... The hello plastic of Warrior Park. South Hobart have sent out the snipers. The, who, where are they? Who knows? They, um, could, they could strike at any time, Nick. I'll tell you what, Braden Man. I wouldn't want to pay Braden Man's phone bill monthly in, in any month, but uh, over the last uh, week, giving well wishes to Devonport players, he's probably racked up a fair bill. So uh, hopefully he wins the best um, golden boot and gets a check of some description to pay for that. This is uh, Gorry. Pumps it forward. Lewis has uh, cleaned that up easily. Just rolls it out to Nichols. Just settling the game down here a bit. Not a bad idea. 
Uh, Tom Pierce is going to have a horrible time in the first half here with the crowd behind him, the horns and the sirens, and the hopefully the young fella can uh, adapt to that nicely, ignore everything thrown his way. He probably wouldn't understand some of the words being said to him, <laughs> but uh, I probably know the sounds of him from way back in the day. Who have we got here? Gustafsson? Boy. 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 Nice and composed on the ball. Nice bit of composed work by uh, Hickey as well. It's gone out to Nichols. We just take a stroll to Nichols. Looks forward, measures the ball for Wadawu, receives back. Pressure coming from Mulroney, so he uses Keeper and Lewis. Drives forward, it's nipped on from Gustafsson to Sakiris. He controls but has it robbed from him by Sison. He does well, slices them apart. Dinks along. Nobody home for Devonport. Just note the addition of the feathers changing colour yeah. on Sison. He's amped up for tonight. He's going big strong a, boy. It's a bit of a rinse through that, isn't it? I have I have actually seen a topless contest with him and Mulroney. And a girl, unknown to either of them, said that uh, Sison actually had the better body, which is hard to believe in my eyes, but uh, well, geez, I wouldn't wouldn't have wanted to be that girl. Mile Rainey would have had some choice words, I reckon. Oh, I reckon so. Rates his rig as Doyen takes the throw in. Blizzard. Gorry. Dispossessed by uh, Gustafsson that time. Little nutmeg by Blizzard. Doesn't collect the ball again. Vandermeer pumps it long to Hoy this time. He settles down. Smith holds him up. Gives it to Gustafsson. Dangerous ball in there to Hickey. Hickey could only do... Probably did well to just pump it away to get it out of uh, harm's way. As Gorey looked to be in behind the defence, but uh, Vandermeer got the favourable bounce and uh, cleans up. Hickey down the line to Hoy. Hoy's going to run at him. Not a bad tactic. He's gone past a couple, but he loses possession. Spills to Chilcott, but they pick up the loose ball. Meredith. It's offside. Chilcott oh, appears to look for the free kick. Taking his time, not a bad option. Terrible horn work behind the goals. Hickey wins the header above Blizzard. Meredith, dispossessed by the rig. Vandermeer, I think it was, punts it long. Wadawu might get there. No, just skips away on the, uh, on the plastic. And the Doyen. It's probably a matchup that uh, Olympia might need to exploit. Doyne's not the uh, quickest bloke. Fairly green. Right back. He, he's a new player to the Victory League, that's for sure, isn't he? Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, the Doyne's been in the system since the first year of Victory League, but he never really got... I think that first year, he's just his effort as Wadawu. Cleared away by Panda. His first year, he got into the, got into the squad just for sheer determination and work rate. He turned up all the time and talked above his years. He had a bit of a lull last year. He... He might have got left out for a, a few others that might not have been too happy about, but he's worked his way back into the team this year. Probably a centre midfielder for mine rather than a right back, you know, but might be a next year proposition. Oh, the corner gets swung in. Pierce confidently out, collects the ball. That's what he'd like, just to get the feel of the ball in his hands. As the replay comes in and Pierce judges that well. Big Pierce, is that a fresh fresh get up, that orange number? I haven't seen that too often. It might be a fresh kit. You're right, I haven't seen it too often. Normally paired up with some orange shorts too. That's probably why he doesn't normally wear it, but he's found the black ones today. Don't know whether you saw Glenn McNeil there, Nick Owen. He just snagged the ball as it went out. Jeezy, his determination on his face. He's got it anyone that wants it more than him. Oh, maybe George Mamarcus. Yeah, though. well, he does practice it in the ads for the uh, league. <laughs> We've all seen it for the last two years, just that written determination. Come on, boys. And he's not even like, it's just an ad plan. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's not just an ad today. This is the real thing. Maybe we should get the cameras out and just film the ad today. I'll, I'll let you in on a, a little secret about the ad. They, to fire him up, they just asked him to yell abuse at me. <laughs> and he did happily as it's nipped over the Ooh. back from Securus. Almost falls for Nick Meredith. He it's was nodded wide by Mark. By Mulraney will be another Warriors corner. Well, the longer it goes, the more nervous they get. As uh, Boy and Gustafsson look to play a short one against the diminutive Doyen and Rig. It's going to be swung in again. They haven't got Holmes in there, but that's gone to the. Just gone straight out. Too high and too far. The wind has picked up, uh, which makes it uh, 
a little bit harder for uh, good quality crosses to come in. Don't really have that target in there as normal. Vandermeer probably or Nichols might need to go a bit forward for the corners as Vandermeer challenges wins a header to Gustafsson. Oh, dispossessed. Lovely by Gustafsson. Is this going to lead to the first goal for Olympia? That's Gustafsson. Low and hard across. It was a cross, <laughs> I think. I would pay him that. It was a cross to the back post, but Ahoy, Meredith, Sakiris, none could get on the bat on the end of it. As we see here, yeah, it did look like a cross to the back post, but Ahoy probably wasn't steaming in. Not that I think he would have got it if he did. Um, and the score remains nil all as uh, Bradley Chilka loves a long ball. It wasn't a bad long ball. Denny, he can't control it. Woolley out there with the long throw. Chilcott again cleans up. Gorry wins the ball from Wadda. Wadda but Woolley cuts it out nicely. Picky to Meredith. It's a long ball out to Hall. Gone over the head of Doyen. Hoy here. This is his spot. Look at this. No. Didn't quite get enough uh, direction on that one. And Pierce, thankfully collection in the bread basket or well, the solar plexus Isles camps under this one he does win the header but Blizzard gets a touch but can't control it Hoy off Riggs face plumage in the middle there Sison Doyen to Maskeel Olympia wouldn't mind if this was uh, the way that Devonport attacked for a majority of this game. Those long balls, they looked to have them pretty much covered. Oh, who was that hickey? Got the ball in a precarious position with his back to goal. Didn't know Gorry was there. I think he looked up in a bit of disgust that no one actually told him. That's a lovely header by Hoyle. Maskeel gets a foot in. Manny Sakaris gets his first chance, does he? No, it's cut out by Dom Smith. Blizzard and Meredith challenge. Gorry skips past Vandermeer. That's going to go way too far. And Lewis picks it up and goes. Tries to settle it down again. It's been a, a few almost moments so far, Nico. Olympia all over them, but just uh, not meaningful chances. And as you said a little while ago, the longer this one goes on, the more nervy both the players are going to get and the fans that have picked out Warrior Park. The ball comes down the right, driven for Wadawi. He's got Sison for company. Reeses by him and rattles off a long ball that finds Hoy in space inside the box on the left. He puts it across the box and Mulroney's there to cut it off and see it out for a corner. Olympia's third of the game. Yes, yeah, the pressure. Well, the pressure on both teams mounts, but uh, Olympia looking the more likely. There's Hoy and Gustafsson again wander over. Probably going to be swung in again. Why wouldn't you swing it in with this breeze? Just put it in the mixer and see what happens. Doesn't look this occasion. Mike Stoyan nearly handles the ball. There was cries, was, weren't there? There were cries, but that's all they were. Vandermeer heads back across. Mulroney does beautifully <laughs> to deny. Nichols, I think it was in there, who's ventured forward for the corner. I don't know whether Mulroney really wants South Hobart to win. But geez, he's putting some great effort so far to deny Olympia chances. There'll be another another corner, I think. Yeah, it's very important that Devonport just don't lie down and let uh, Olympia have their way today, just for a bit of pride out of the season. And they still can make the six, but uh, no one's ex expecting them to. If they cause an upset here, just to take that little bit out of the season that's been somewhat of a probably I don't know another better word than a failure, really. Gilly, if they can't make the six, they had a fairly good uh, squad at the start of the year. Yes, they've had injuries. There's a corner swinging. Lovely corner again. He doesn't handle it first time this time, but uh, it's in no danger. I like the way Olympia are actually attacking those balls in the box. They're not going to die wondering, which is uh, all we can ask for. Nichols. Little, uh, some sort of control move there. I don't know how you call it. Isle settles it down, gives it back into Nichols. May. Back to Lewis. Ooh, it's a nice touch. They've worked it out well here. And Woolley's in a dangerous position coming down the right. He's got a bit of time. He's got two at the back post, and that's a terrible cross. Straight to Chilcott. 
Dommy Smith, Sison, Chilcott again. This is where they've been coughing it up in past weeks. They've worked in there okay. Now here's the problem. Numbers are out. Lovely work by Olympia just to turn them around and put the pressure on. And that's how they played when they played at Valley Road last time with a 2-0 victory and uh, gave Devonport all sorts of nightmares that day. They did. More. It's playing out somewhat similar. Okay, well, Devonport not looking great, but they're just making it tough. They're putting a value on their goal. It comes along and Gorry nudges clear of... There's Hickey there and it's out for a throw in. Probably seen a thunderbolt from Hickey from about that range. It was in the goals of the year. Uh, whether it won or not, I don't know, but it was a pretty good goal. It would be a contender, that's for sure. Sison picks up the ball. Looked like he was going to cough it up. Mo Rainey did enough to get past Isles and he's given it to Blizzard. Blizzard. Another dink straight. It's just those straight through balls. We talked about them last year with the boys. Straight through boys. Straight through balls very rarely work. You get a bit of angle on him, Gilly. You do indeed. This is played short from Hoyt at Isles. He runs it out. Out for a throw in. So Devonport doing enough to frustrate the Warriors at this point in time. Throw in to Gorey. He finds Mulroney inside for the big rig. Douglas, he battles with Hickey. Hickey comes out on top. Finds with Dawu. Nudges it. Good stuff since way. It's over the top. It's secure. He fires a shot and it's saved. Well down low by Tommy Pierce. Good save by the youngster and Sakiris. Had time to just measure it on the half volley. Whacked it, but it was straight at Pierce. Just got down to it quick enough, did Tom. Fair play to him, and he did all the right things. Probably just needed a little bit wider of the keeper, and he might have been a chance, but uh, all done pretty well as Maskeel plays it back to Pierce. Pierce clears well down the line, but I reckon it's going to be a throw in for no, Snuck in there. Nichols has done enough to dispossess him. No real pressure from Devonport further up the field. Flicked on by the Dine. Gustafsson. Yeah, a little bit of a high boot by Gustafsson. Maskell doesn't mind sticking his head in where uh, he generally shouldn't. Last week, I don't know if you saw the, the challenge he put on uh, to deny Sunday against uh, Zebras but he just stuck his head in the way twice while he was lying on the ground what an idiot but uh, what a legend oh Pierce with some trickery at the back shifts it out to the left of the big Uluru Chilcott had a good season in a struggling side long and strong from Blizzard brings it down tries to play it down the flank and it's Isles who sees it clear Lukey Isles Operating at full back. They've seen him in a, a range of roles. Throw in now. It's Blizzard who picks it up. He nips inside. Hickey's there to retrieve it and finds Isles to Hoy. He drives long. It's a nice ball out in front. Sakiris. Can he bring it down? He takes a touch. Oh, oh no! He squandered a golden opportunity to open for the Warriors. He takes one, he takes another, and he fires wide. A curl back, but. After it passed the goal frame, that is a golden chance the Warriors would have liked to put away. Well, we I reckon even Pierce might have even gave up on it a little bit. He only probably really needed to hit the target. And oh dear. This is what Olympia don't want to see. A bad day in front of goals by Manny might just have hearts in the mouths of the Olympia fans. He's, uh, ooh, he might have copped a knock on the head there. He's... Uh, Harry Woolley it was. Dom Smith looked to have uh, just came in a little bit late on him. No malice, but it's definitely collected him. He's up though. Might have a headache for a little bit. There's Nichols. They're getting nicely in behind here now. There's Gustafsson this time. Skips past Sison. It's a cross into the box to Maskeel cuts it out. That's dangerous there by Sison. Shouts of a penalty. Jimmy Hordle doesn't want any of it. And the Doyen. Clears long. It was just more out of desperation, I think, the penalty shout than actually anything really in it. There's a few offside there by Olympia. No one challenges for it. Panda gets it forward. A little bit uh, out of shape here, Devonport, for a little bit. They're back in shape now, and that's a terrible by Nichols. Isles does enough. Sends a little glare Nichols' way. He wasn't too happy with uh, his work there. Oh, 
flicked inside. Rick Douglas puts it over to Blizzard. Oh, Vandermeer that time, clearing the danger. Yes, it almost looks like Blizzard or no one for Devonport at the moment. Yeah, he's it. He is it for Devonport. The longer the game goes on as, and as the longer it stays nil all, you just, you just never know in this game of football. It only takes one good chance. This is driven from Gorry. Across the left, Dennehy tries to bring it down. It's Warriors through Hickey. Finds Isles, delivers inside to Meredith. Nudges it Hoy's way, who's been busy and been good. He's got Daya for company. It's inside, finds Gustafsson. Dinks over the top as Meredith kept on running. Holds it up. He's got time to shoot. He fires. It's well saved by Pierce. It's still there for the Warriors. Securus looks to flick on. It's come off his back heel. But Devonport can scurry clear. They do through Douglas and it's there for Blizzard. He boons off his marker and Nichols. The ball keeps on bobbling away. Comes to Blizzard. He fires a shot from the edge of the box. It hits the post. It's still there for Devonport. Bobbles up. Nichols. Oh, they get it clear. I've been holding my breath oh since the pier save. Oh my god, you could, you could sense the entire crowd just a Jimmy Hortle. A joint Jimmy sigh of relief kick. as that one clattered into the goal frame. Can you have you specs over here? Replay. Oh no, we're going back to the... Here's the poster. Blizzard. Lewis. Oh, oh that was not. A couple of coats Heart of pain. And that's in. They've gone from one end to the other. If you could vote now for round 21 spec saves of the year, here it is. Specs over the week. I don't care what happens in the rest of the games. Ah, oh, Piers, stop it. I oh, know Devonport were paying 10 bucks. Maybe Piers is on us. He said, no, no, Chow Pass today. That wouldn't be true. But, uh, oh, wow. We're still near low somehow. Jimmy Hordle's just sorting things out. Not sure what happens. I don't know how it was a dead ball in the halfway line. We sort of uh, lost ourselves in the... I'd like to have a breath as Hoy. He hits it low and hard. Pierce. Oh dear. What's he what's he had on the way down on the bus? He's full of beans, the kid. Pumps it long. Rick Douglas won't go anywhere near it. Adam Gray, oh man, he's a curious. If he'd collected then, he could have been sent off, to be honest. That was a fair swing at nothing. As Pierce looks up, you can hear by the horn every time he goes to kick it. Woolley wins the header, as does Hickey, as does Blizzard. It's on here at the moment. Woolley just sliding in there a little bit hard. Did miss the target. Hickey tries to clean up. They just wanted to get it out of there for a minute. Just a little nerve, just the nerves. Oh, gee whiz, I'd be nervous too if I was them, but... The nerves are kicking in a little bit. They're not playing at the best Olympia. They have obviously had the best chances of the game. But uh, here's Tom Pierce. Going to be the man that denies Olympia. Here he is again cleaning up. Only 21 minutes in. There's nothing really to panic about if, you're Olymp if you are Olympia. Still plenty of time. Still got result at the moment. Sees them win the title. But uh, what are we? He's through on goal. He should score. Pierce denies him again. There's just a silence behind the goals. No one really wants to know. There's people of all ages here to see um, Olympia gun for their first title in a long time. They'll probably hear the last time in 96, I believe, Gilly. And they are very nervous at the moment. Ball comes long, Vandermeer cleans up. Hickey, back to Nichols. Yeah, Tom Pierce, at the moment, is still in the way of an Olympia opener. He's been sublime early in this one. He's produced probably three or four really, really good saves. Very, probably really disgusted with his game last week, to be honest, but he's uh, making up for it here, that's for sure. There's uh, Sakiris. Does some dancing, but doesn't get far. He does keep possession, gives it to Wadawu. Not great on his left by the looks of it. Gives it back to Sakiris. We've kept possession well here. A bit of a switch to Isles would have been the, probably the third option, but it goes to Vandermeer. He swings a long ball in. Pierce on his game again. Finds Mulroney. Probably gets a little bit on it. There's going to be a challenge here. 
Mulroney, the big chook chested man, gives it back to Doyne. Just checks on Isles, that's a nice touch. Hoy, that's a free kick in anyone's language. Plays it short, oh, Isles. Little movement ahead of him, he's going to have to create something here, and he does, oh, he did sort of half pulled the trigger and he just pulled it wide in his indecision. Probably thought he was a bit too far out to score, especially in the form of Pierce's wing. He's just put doubt in their heads already. Nice connection. Looks like Nichols got the flick on. The ball's gone to Gorry. It's a two on one here. Gorry, will he shoot? No, he's cut it back to Blizzard. Blizzard shoots. Oh, just wide by oh Blizzard. God. Oh, that easily could have been 1-0 Devonport. The banana slugs. Oh. Anything but at the moment. They haven't come out sluggish at all. Oh, Gory does Gory. lovely there. Top knot. Geez, that's not far Ooh. away. Bo Blizzard. Bo Blizzard at one end. Tom Pierce at the other. I don't Tricky know. customers. Don't know what I'd do. I'd have to wear a nappy if I was Glenn McNeil. I'd just end up wetting myself. Be that, that nervous. I'm nervous for him. As uh, Lewis plays it out to Van der Mille. Pumps it long. It's going to find Gustafsson. Sison doesn't have his eye on the ball. Oh, jeez. Thought it might have been off Sison, but no. It's a goal kick. The subs warm up. Pierce again. Devonport aren't pushing high. They're happy to camp very deep into their own half, really, at the moment. Which gives us Olympia space through the middle, but uh, clogs things up a bit closer to goal as we've seen by a few long shots, but they have, at times, got him behind. Woolley, long to Meredith. Meredith tries something fancy on Sison, but Sison sees it out for a goal kick. Just nonchalantly rolls it out to Bradley Chilcott. Gives it to Dommy Long Legs. Waterloo dispossesses him, but he coughs it up as well. A bit both ways there. Now Gustafsson has it. He's, has he skipped past? Gorry comes back and uh, sees the ball out for throwing. Just slowing it down. We're going to have a long throw by Woolley by the looks of it, or is it Waterloo? I'm nervous for Olympia at the moment. I am too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there's no way that this one uh, should be played the way it's being played at the moment. They've had the better of the contest. Chance. Almost falls for Hoy. It's raked clear by our man, Rick Douglas. It's a contest in the air. Neither player gets anywhere near the ball. It was Hickey and Dennehy. Dennehy looks to be in a bit of trouble. So we see this one again. It was chaos in the box until the big rig arrives. Sweeps it clear. He's only just got over his hangover from last Saturday, I believe, so it's good to actually see him here playing. Saw some uh, images. Yeah, yeah a like few wiki leaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Riggy leaks, <laughs> we'll call them. Uh, pretty good. Uh, that's Probably got more than one meeting, Riggy leaks. As it comes down the line, it's uh, Woolley that plays in for the Darwu, taken away by the big Red Rock, Jill Cop. He loses for a moment. Vandermeer does the old settle down, boys. The outstretch arms. Finds Nichols. Nichols to back to Vandermeer. Beautiful ball. Oh, it's a well, long. Woolley's onside here. They hasn't got a lot in the box. He's going to have to give it more. Oh, no, Sakiris was there. Just floating in at the top of the box, but he didn't communicate well enough to let Woolley know that he was coming. But he, they've got a corner. Surely they're not going to leave two Devonport players up on the halfway line by themselves. Yeah, McNeil not happy about those two players on the halfway line. Because remember, after this corner, that looked like handball from Nichols, but no, he saw it. Olympia, if they can keep Devonport scoreless, they win the title. For yeah, all intents and purposes. That's the um, the luxury they have, don't they, Nico? They only need a draw to, uh, to claim the victory league shield this afternoon. Yes, definitely very important not to leave 
even numbers as uh, Mulroney wins the header. He's going to have to chase it down himself. He's doing a pretty good job of that. The ball's out. Just got some scores drifting in on the uh, yeah, we uh, do. tweet box. Range is up 1-0 over Kingbra. Eight minutes in there. Obviously, it's older than that now, but that's when the update is. 1-0 uh, South Hobart over Glenorchy. So, a fair away from there, 30. Yeah. 2-1 to City over at KG5. Uh, Range is up 1-0. So, uh, plenty happening in the Victory League, Nico. It's it's madness, this final day stuff. Yeah. None of those results matter, really, except for uh, this one. Goals and stuff matter in some of the other games, but... Uh, Really, this is the game where it's at. As Doyne picks up the ball, Gorry nicely in touch, but he doesn't uh, keep possession. Tiki, you'll give it out to Nadalu, maybe, and he does. Lovely switch of play by Nadalu. Hoy controls it. Oh, he probably looked a bit for that free kick. It was probably there in the end, even though he did sort of play for it. As the Doyne. Smacks it into Nichols' head. Is it going to be a corner? No. Vandermeer comes across and turns it into a throw-in. Yes, Braden Mann uh, still goalless. Which, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Adam you're killing Nich a red-hot sniff, you got to... Yes. Yeah, okay. Long way to go in those games, of course. If Wonsistan City get up, they're 2-1 up now after 25 minutes. Jeez, what a year they've had. Amazing. Very hot. Probably a very warm favourite for coach of the year is Lino Shuli. And one of my smokies for the Mitzi tonight, as I like to call it, is uh, Dom Rossi. Definitely had a great season. Not a lot of people stand out more than he, do, he does. So that's my tip. If you can get odds on it somewhere, a little each way bet. There's Nichols now. Closed into Hoy. Might be a bit of a uh, Will Devonport run out of legs through the middle. I know Rick Douglas isn't the fittest bloke in the world. Sison hasn't played a lot in there. 2-0 over at uh, Darcy Street. Alex Lazinski with two. Braden Man fans, namely Braden Man himself, <laughs> uh, won't be happy with that one. No, definitely not. No doubt Braden will be counting assists today as well. He'll have 20-something goals and 37 assists. Loves an assist these days. Loves goals more than ours. Blizzard. What are we? Streaks back. Well done. It's Hoy now. The trials. Can't find it. Rick Douglas. Rusty. Gives me a smile from the pitch. He heard it. All sorts of rust, Rick. Do a pre season or something. This is probably where Olympia just need to step up the intensity. They've uh, didn't pull it, starting to run out of the, you know, they don't, have, don't look as sharp as they did. Ooh, gee whizzy. Pierce tried to clear, it's gone straight to Hickey. Hickey's tried the audacious effort and he probably just didn't get his uh, foot in the right angle and he hit it well, just off target. So it's Pierce to bring it back in. Plenty going on around the grounds. Olympia on top here, but not on the scoreline. Neil all. Throwing the throw back from Lewis to Vandermeer. It's a beautiful. And strong. Hoy! Oh, he's done it! He taps in! Olympia he's open! Confusion at the back for Devonport. And Hoy was there to tap it in. And a strong and vocal crowd here at Warrior Park erupt into celebration. It's the opener they've craved. They breathe a sigh of relief. It was a goal seemingly not from a lot, Nico. It came over the top and you thought Devonport would probably see it clear as we might grab a replay in just a second. And uh, Hoy was there just to latch onto it. Yes, I think Pierce just thought it was going to drift over Hoy, so he was going to collect the ball. Totally left the goals open and Hoy first touch the crowd behind go wild and not <laughs> George Mermarkis in the background loves uh, it <laughs> sighs of relief you could just hear the crowd erupt they didn't 
they'd been pretty quiet up until this point, to be honest. But that certainly uh, woke them up, and there's big, big size of relief. It's obviously not over yet, but I'll tell you what, that'll relax everyone around the park. Chilcott now. Gives it, Gary gives it back to... No free kick, says Hortle. As uh, Hoy. Looked at nutmeg Riggy, but Riggs a bit wilier than that. Does all right there, and I think they're going to earn themselves a throw-in. Doyen, Gorry to no one. Just the relief in the crowd. You could hear it, Gilly. You're wondering what, what they're all doing. Couldn't hear him. There's an old, an Olympia old boy, old uh, Stockers. In the crowd is Lewis. Doesn't want to be doing too much of this. Come, it was effective. Nichols. Looks long again. I was leaves that one. Goes out for a throw in. More. Doyle with a throw in into Chilcott. He goes back to Sison. Not a bad bit at more, do you mean? Boy, and Isles dispossessed Doyle. Gustafsson. Oh, I thought he was going to pull the trigger there. It's been left for Wadawu. Low and hard, but well, it was low. And Pierce cleans that one up. Manny probably didn't mean to leave that one, but he did. Pierce long, Vander May camps under it. No one out on the right there for uh, support, and the ball trickles out. Mephrophesy picks the ball up, gives it to Dommy Longlegs. They're going to cough it up again. Here are they, Devonport. The ball bounces around. No, Panda gives it to Doyne. Dorian plays it to Mulroney. Mulroney tries something fancy. Doesn't work. Lewis, no nonsense. Stays in. Goes out. A handball by the Dorian. <laughs> you must wait till it goes out before you uh, catch it, my friend. Whole ball was not out. Says Becky McGee on the line. Isles plays it to Senor Letters Farmer. Rigi slides across. He won't slide on here too much. He rates his legs pretty highly. All of a sudden, George Marcus has got a few more friends behind the goals. I think they might build as the, the day goes on. A couple of updates, Nico. Or we just wait for this one as it's put over the top from. Stuff a nice bit of work. It's in midfield through Hickey. He shifts it out wide. Finds Isles. He's got Sice in there for company. And squeezed out by Isles. So a couple of updates. Launceston City now 3-1 up over the Zebras. So uh, interesting times for the Zebras. Of course, this game fairly well meanless in terms of their... Uh, position on the ladder they can't shift from third spot but a big one from Launceston City you'd see them finish fifth which is massive considering their last two seasons uh, and an update from down the den 2-0 Chris Hill looping the keeper down there to put the Rangers up 2-0 really getting some undue attention just a nice little bit of rhyming there too Gilly Gill Hill down the something, whatever you said, it rhymed, it was nice, I liked it. The Sison plays it long and diagonal, but uh, Devonport aren't pressing too hard to get the equaliser. It's Chilcott, steps on the ball, controls it, Rick to Smith, Gorry, coughs it up, Hickey does likewise. Well, Blizzard does thought he'd done well there, but he did couldn't go around three of them. It's Chilcott wins the header. Sison. Gorry coughs it up again. They're a chance here to Olympia. They've got numbers. Maskeel cleans up. 
No bobbly pitches for Pierce to this week. So Dennehy looks like to be a chance here, but it's a, a cheeky back heel by Woolley. Gary will rig hit this. He should. He skipped past. No, he hasn't skipped past any. Just hit it, Rig. Who are you trying to kid? He's a lettuce farmer. Got a push in the back from the Doyen. Hoy's in an advanced position. And Mike's Doyen. Little pushy pushy. Skill just coughs it up to Hoy. Hickey. A little bit of slice on that one to Wadawu. Smith. Oh, oh, he was a witch's hat. Yeah. But uh, corner. Sison with the colourful feathers just uh, comes <laughs> across. Wadawu stays down. Really strong crowd in for this one particularly behind the goal in which Olympia are running to at the moment. The Dalu down, a little bit of strife. Might receive some attention here. And Sison came out of that one. A little bit of a worry as well. As well as a breaking play, ladies and gentlemen, around the grounds of Victor League today. Up at uh, Darcy Street, we see South Hobart winning 2-0. George doing and some of his finest on the mic. He is indeed. I hadn't heard him spe speak until the goal went in, so... <laughs> Interesting to see that Braden Mann hasn't scored yet. I'll have to get an update on whether McEwen scored, but he's still up for grabs. The Golden Boot, that's for sure. Which is a uh, side plot to today's main plot, which is Olympia being a victory to claim the title. So far, so good for the Warriors, although, geez, it was a nervy start, wasn't it, Nico? It was a nervy start for us, Gil, like, and we don't even really have any bias towards, well I've got a bias towards Devonport but I'm still feeling the heat for poor old Olympia. Very much relieved as Luke Isles swings in a nice corner. Uluru Chilcut gets his big ginger nut in the way and has gone out to Gustafsson for a throw in. Wadawu, they are playing a little bit more relaxed football here. Wadawu dancing around, nothing wrong with him. He earns another corner. Just generations of people behind the goals. Look at that shot. That's good for Tasmanian football. Women, children, pensioners. My old man's there, that's who I'm talking about. <laughs> he's a pensioner. There he is in the red. As our uh, Isles swings it in, but Sison gets in the way. And speaking of red, here's Gorry. Hickey dispossesses him. Hickey's up for the fight today. He knows what to do. Doyen to Sison. Nadia Dominici. Picks it up again. He's had enough of playing around. Yeah, kick it a lettuce farmer's head. Blizzard. That might have been a tad early to go. Bobo. Look at him, he's an angry boy. Look at him. Top knot's never been so high. He does have a good leap on him. Up he goes and down he comes. His Isles. Lovely little play there. Is he going to hit it? He's on his right. That's a nice strike. Didn't dip though. And it goes over for a goal kick. Pierce now sends forth for the goal kick. It's won by Vandermeer in the air. He assisted a decisive goal. It was a long raking diagonal that picked out Hoy. And he just poked it home on the volley. They look a more confident bunch now, although Nichols, oh, nervy stuff at the back. Lewis good enough to see it clear of Blizzard. Hickey keeps it moving. Maskell on it. He and Hoy collide and I don't Maskell know. sends it to the neighbours. I don't know if you saw the challenge last week between Togill and Maskell, but it was the crunch of the season. 50-50, both hit the same ball. Both got up like nothing ever happened. It was amazing. As Isles gives it, coughs it up to Riggy. Riggy knows how to work a free kick, but oh, Jimmy Horder, he's all over Rig. None of his antics today. Gorry turns inside. He's got a bit of space. Looks for Dennehy. And a nice message there, say no to racism. Can only be called the, uh, the shipping container stand. It's 
packed as well. Long to Dum to Chilcott. Mulroney with an unusual good touch. Big Gorry on the ball. Back for Smith. Down the line for Dennehy. They're still fighting the strikers, which is what you like to see. It's Gorry who brings it under his spell. Yeah, he's pushed off it, but finds Mulroney. Almost sits for him to whack a volley goalward, but it's Nichols who sees clear and out for throwing. Your boy Mike Dayer, the doyen, is rig offering. He says, no thanks, rig, and just throws it straight oh, camera, to the opposition. Ooh, big trouble. Camera in absolute strife. Did not want to sacrifice the camera for one of the most amazing shots you'll ever pick up. <laughs> I don't blame her. As throwing comes in now from Mulroney to Douglas, he loses it. It's just a nice little dink out from Hickey. Those dainty dinks, they're a real uh, showpiece of his game. He's had a sublime season. You'd have to think he's going to feature up towards the top end of the Mitsubishi Motors Best and Ferris medal tonight as Lewis is worried off it a little bit. Good pressure coming from Gorry. He yells something at his teammates, really trying to fire up the strikers here. They don't want to go down with anything less than a bit of fight as it's Hickey who navigates it round. Wizard finds Nichols. Isles looks to nip inside. It's Douglas who takes it for Devonport and finds Blizzard, but he can't control. Yeah. Out of play for a Warrior throw. Luke Isles will have to learn that the, uh, those young blood tricks don't work, work on the old timers. Riggy's uh, cut him out a couple of times there. Isles with the throw in. We're about to tick into stoppage time in the first half. Just if anyone from Olympia is listening, an Uzo might warm us up a little bit over this side of the field and just sneak one over in the uh, in the half-time break. That'd be nice. Put out an SOS. Send <laughs> Uzo sharpish. I reckon uh, we'll get whatever we like from the Warriors today. Uh, the way things are going is it's in the bullseye and it's Devonport who take it out of there. Lettuce Farmer just rattles off a ball down the flank. Nobody coming in a white shirt. Devonport will pick it up through Pierce. Wasn't his best effort on the goal, was it, Tommy Pierce? Just a bit of confusion at the back, but geez, apart from that, he's been uh, pretty darn good. Totally misread that one, but apart from that, had it stayed nil all, he'd have been three votes at half time for sure. He was pulled off specs over the year, even though he's not in contention. And I know some people wouldn't be happy with that. I know. Uh, Chilcott had a little bit to say on uh, <laughs> Facebook or something like that as uh, Mulroney tried to play it to Rig. Rig was never going to score a goal. He's always, doesn't matter where he is, he's too far out uh, to score. There are some co complexities around having the dinner on the uh, night of the final day. Uh, we can't exactly get the vision from a goal happening on the day to go review it and then get people to vote. So, Ulleri Chilcott, yes, uh, pipe down a little bit, champion. <laughs> a little bit of respect for the Gilmeister. Lewis. Sends this one long, it's off the boot of Isles, and that's half time. A half time lead of one goal to nil for the Warriors. A lead they need. They've just got 45 minutes in front of them, and then they'll be league champions, all going according to plan. Nico, how'd you see that first half? Yeah, well, we're going to have a replay of the goal first, and here it is. Pierce thought Hoy was going to get nowhere near it, but Hoy. Did what the ball's coming over his shoulder. Pierce is coming out, doesn't really know where he is. He senses that Pierce has gone too far and he's just tapped it past him into the back of the net. That is a classy goal, despite it not being spectacular. That took a lot of class, very, very classy goal. Can't be in goal of the year because, of, as we just said. Um, now, in effect, Olympia have a two goal buffer. Well, they won't be thinking that, but uh, Devonport would need to score two goals to ruin the championship for Olympia, should Olympia not score another goal, so uh, two goals a difference, I can't see Devonport really hitting the target twice as uh, what are we go and uh, patch up the bullet hole mate, it's in there somewhere uh, yep, Pierce probably just playing a great game, except for that one moment and that's, what, that's the problem with being a keeper you stuff up once, it's normally a goal. Any other player does that sort of a mistake and it's, uh, you know, the keeper normally cleans them up. But uh, 
plenty of kids here, Nico. Gee whiz, yeah, look at them. Just a lot of blue just piling onto the pitch. A lot of excitement amongst the crowd. It was a half largely owned by Olympia. A very nervy, nervy start. And they're almost made a pay with a couple of really golden chances for Devonport. If they had gone in, geez, I wouldn't have liked to be here too much. No, if you're, if you're missing a kid, get down here because they're probably here. <laughs> Um, but uh, some familiar faces actually. I've seen a few of these players, little fellas, run around at half time. That one out there with the like the David Luiz hair, so I like him. He's a good little player. He probably would have finished that goal too. Manny Sakaris would be disgusted with that effort, really. That should have been the Just, opener, really. Well, hit the target for a start and then see what happens. No good sending it on wide open. And this was just about the play of the day. We see a tremendous save from Pierce. Just a tip wide, a Meredith shot, and I thought Meredith did really well to shape the shoot, and then straight on the counter, Blizzard pounces, fires off a shot, whack, Six in the inches. left upright. Yeah, not much in it, and it could have been a 1 0 lead against the flow of play. Here's another one for Hoy. He had a good shot, and yet again it was plucked out from Tommy Pierce. And another one from Wadawe. So he, he had his gloves full in the first half. He did really, really well. Um, you'll see in a moment there was another chance for Devonport. Devonport really with only two chances in the game, but they were golden ones. And uh, Tommy Pierce stood up for strikers on most occasions. Here's the second chance. Gorry found some space, laid it off. For Blizzard, who steady and fired a shot just past the right upright. It might have even grazed the goal frame. But apart from that, it's been all Warriors. Plenty of chances. Statistically, they're on top. They get six shots on, six shots off. They're all over these banana sug strikers. And uh, as as Nico said, they virtually have a two-goal buffer given the fact that they only need a draw to win the title. We watched that goal again. A terrific finish from Gavin Hoy. He made it look really easy, but that's not all that easy. Coming over the top and on the left, he's just volleyed it into the bottom right, and that sent the crowd into an eruption of a mixture of celebration and relief. There's a strong crowd here at Warrior Park, and one would think they're 45 minutes away from having a deserved celebration of what has been a terrific season for Olympia. It will be their first Senior League title since 1996 and their maiden Victory League title. Stay with us. We'll be back for the second half. Will there be drama? Will Devonport snatch back one? We'll have it all for you. We'll take a little breather now.
Well, we're back for the second half. It was a uh, nervy, uh, siding first stanza, and Olympia hold a 1-0 lead over Devonport. They need 45 more good minutes to close out, not just this game, but the league title. Devonport need to uh, upset them and, and win in order for Olympia to relinquish the title, but you'd think from here, surely the Warriors will be too good and take it out. They'll take nothing for granted though. I think they'll be nervous until the final whistle. Nico. Yeah, there's a nice buzz around the ground. I did a nervous wee at half time and you'd be pleased to know Gilly and uh, crowd are buzzing. The kids are buzzing, the older players, are bu older people are buzzing. Uh, for Olympia's sake, we hope the uh, their players are buzzing. Now Gorry was very animated at half time. He's trying to get his charges up to cause the upset. They certainly haven't given it away as uh, Gustafsson dribbles it, plays it out to Isles. Sison shin bones it to shin bones. Who, who, what's that? Shin boners? No, we don't want them. What are we? Pumps it in the box. Oh, Hoyle sneaking in there, but Pete Pierce was out to collect it. Plays it out wide to the Doyen, Michael Dyer. He plays it up to Blizzard. Bit of a lone ranger roll up there in the nine. Does some of his best work with his back to goal, must say. Not the right size for a number nine, but certainly probably got the right game for it. Needs a little bit more support from a ten or his winger somewhere. Here's a chance. Strikes it. Pierce again. Manny Securis won't want to hear his name. Here's the chance. Maskill put a little bit of pressure on him. Pierce was up to the fairly regulation save in the end, but did did well. Isles to Wadawu. Mike's dying with that lack of pace. Just Wadawu skips past, but that's a stinky ball with the left foot, and it goes out for a goal kick. Would have loved to have wandered into Olympia's and just listened to the half-time address. Should have listened through the wall. I'll do that next time. As Pierce plays it long. Gorry picks up the ball and audaciously tries a strike, but uh, well, it was on target, and that's about all that was good about it. As uh, Nichols, Blizzard putting a little bit of pressure on. It is a shank by uh, Lewis, but Olympia going to end up with it. Hoy's going to end up with it from Woolley. Don't know what he did there, he just dribbled it straight out. Scared of the rig, I understand. Dom Smith. Ends up throwing it straight to Meredith. Securus has got kept interested by the ball, but he was never going to get on the end of it. Tommy Pierce. Goes long again, Vandermeer parked under this one, gets his bounce on it. Sison heads it back and Blizzard flicks it on the outside of the boot to Rig. Does well there, and who did he skip past? Uh, Hickey. The ball oh, nearly found its way to Mulroney, it did take a deflection. Blizzard was going to go through all the way himself. And why not, he was, uh, had the momentum. There's the Doyen, dispossessed, but Blizzard picks up the loose ball. He skipped round one, free kick. Is that Chirper out there on the line? Gilly, is that his nickname? R referee's assistant? Yeah, don't know if it's him, but that is a nickname of an assistant. He looks chirpish from here, so we'll just go with... Uh, yeah, far side. Oh, Chirper. just make stuff up. Yeah, no, it's Chirper. As uh, Gorry is going to... Has Wadawi gone into the book there? He did go into the book there, Wadawi, with some cheese. Don't know if it was cheese worthy, maybe there was a bit of shirt pulling or something in it. Gorry's out there to take it. Is he a dead ball specialist? We'll find out. Plenty of movement in the box. That's gone probably harmlessly over the top. Needed a bit more whip on it. Nadia Dominici just picked it up. They're going nowhere fast here with the back to goal. Pointed to where it was going to go. He kicked it there, but no one was really there. There's the crowd just Jeev Andermay who sold some candy to Mulroney and nearly didn't work. As Lewis 
thinks that the pitch is made out of grass and just makes a divot for himself. It's come out to uh, Harry Woolley. Oh, Dom Smith just with some afters. Harry Woolley, well, if you dish it out, you've got to take it, so he'll move on. He'll probably line him up next time. It'll be interesting to see. Maybe firing Woolley up's a little bit of a tactic by the youngster, Dom Smith. As Woolley shuffles down, looks like he wants to take a long throw in. Loves a long throw in, Rory DeLapp style. Doesn't, throws it short to Gustafsson, to Hickey. Nice little back heel by Hickey. Woolley should deliver. It's in the box. Is it a chance? No, Gorry picks up the ball. Rig Douglas. Terrible ball by Rig. Manny Sakiris coughs it up to Gorry and he's maxed into the uh, shipping container stand. Maskeel does his best work on the ground. Doyen pumps it long. Blizzard won't challenge. Van der May goes all the way back to Lewis. He controlled it well. Does well to get rid of it now. Some afters from Blizzard. Are we going to see a cheesy slice again? Here it is. Nice fluorescent slice of cheese to go with Jimmy Hordle's outfit. And uh, Banana Slug Blizzard is... Uh, Shaking his head, but it would have been late because I actually looked away and then the contact was made. So I was definitely late. Jimmy Hordle maybe just trying to settle the game down a little bit. There could have been a bit of altercation between Smith and Woolley. Bit coming into the game. Smith does well to win the header. Gorry goes up against Hickey. Hickey came down hard. That won't... Uh, Bode well for the celebrations afterward, if, he, if indeed there are celebrations. Woolley, I did like his haircut from earlier in the season, to be fair, Gil. He's gone for something a little bit cleaner, which probably suits the ladies. But uh, Gustafsson, Sison, who's going to win it? Someone handballs it, maybe. Sison takes it quick to Mulroney. Into the rig. Smith. It's all a bit easy at the moment yeah, for Olympia. It, it really is, and that'll suit them to a T, Nico. As Nick Meredith picks it up in the bullseye, plays out to the left. Oh, brings it into the box, and it's Tom Pierce again at the edge of his six. Collects with a plum. Throws out for Douglas. He's got Hickey tracking him down. He does well to nudge a ball out in front of Blizzard, who's been a one-man man this afternoon. Throw in for him. We go back for Douglas. Chest down. A little bit of a shimmy and a shake from the big rig. They call that the rig arm, Gil. He goes Throws one arm out one way, goes the other. Goes back and it's Sison on the ball. Weasels his way around Hickey and it's moved along by Mulroney to Blizzard. Bobbles up on him and he just goes for a bit of a man hug. It might have been a violation of... Uh, he might have got a bit lower than a man hug. He, well, he's gone that. Uh, he's a cheeky little cuddle. Doing his one and two times tables. Vandermeer over this one, he's, he posed significant threat with a long ball earlier. What can he deliver here? He pumps it long and strong. It's brought down by Smith. It's Gory who tries to run onto it. Dennehy back from Maskeel. The panda down the line, finds Gory. Taken off his boot by Isles, but it'll be a striker's ball. On paper, not a bad side, Devonport. They really have underachieved this season, haven't they, Nico? Uh, if you think about the team at the start of the year, you could probably say that. At the moment, the team is yeah, a bit Yeah, obviously, obviously right now, you're missing some key cogs. But they had Eves for a, a little bit of the season. He, he was out, so we didn't have him last year, so it made it probably hard to know what he was going to do this year. Hingston came in a bit late. A lot was expected of Gorry at the start of the season. I think Gorry was my tip for the Mitzi. Tonight, but I don't think he would be in contention. He has been invited, obviously, but uh, I'm not sure he'd be in contention. There'd be others ahead of him from Devonport, I would think. But um, then again, I don't think like a referee, so it's a ball. Nichols does well to win it there in front of Gorry. A lot was expected of him after he came back from New South Wales under 20 league last year. Blizzard was another year older. 
as Waterwoo wrestles the Doyle off the ball. Is that handball? It is handball. Yeah, there was a fair bit of... I actually genuinely thought Devonport would finish in fourth, despite being a supporter of them. I think my, I'm pretty objective, and I, I did think that with the squad they had, they were always a chance, but it hasn't panned out that way. As the ball into the box finds Maskeel, Gorry sends it out. Couple of updates, Nico McEwen gets a goal, so he surges ahead at the top of the golden boot tally. Uh, two, three over at KG Fire Football Park. Down at the den, it seems all over to be honest. Tannhauser with two. The Tannhauser. Town I love his work. Three nil to the Rangers. And for me, I'm just going to put it out there. Smokey for the Victory Cup. I, I really think they're starting to get people back fit and firing at the business end of things. Nick Lanau Atkinson back in the mix today. So, uh, yeah, they're. Uh, they loom large for the Victory Cup and they're on top down at the Den. So a couple of updates there. This one still going. We're in the 56 as Wadalu sweeps so across looking for Sakiris. It's seen out from Chilcot now for a corner. Uh, judging by Sakiris' form today, he's not going to be in contention for the Golden Boot. Don't think that'll worry him if uh, they get up, but uh, certainly kicked himself out of it today. As a plate short, Gustafsson picks it up and gives it back to Hoy. Is it going to fall to an Olympia player? No, it looks like Gorry's going to get there ahead of Wadawu. Wadawu does well. Might have been a free kick. Will that play unfold? Gorry's played a nice ball through to Blizzard. Lewis doesn't do great with it. He'd want to get back into goals because the ball's rebounded back to Blizzard. Dennehy gives it to Gorry. Goal now would send shivers down the spine of McNeil and Marcus. Gustafsson just gives it a little one to go on with it. Nothing in that. That's what you want to see. Really interested to see how this golden boot race unfolds. Yeah, given that McEwen now further ahead. Oh, it's 4 0 down at the Den. Towns flicks on a header. 4 0. Rangers really putting Kingber Lions to the sword. And, uh, Disappointing. Second half only just getting underway at Darcy Street, so a little bit late to restart. It's picked up from Sakiris. He drops it off with Dawu. Shimmy's out to the left, rockets it into Sice, and there for Hoy. He picks it up, latches onto it, turns out onto the left, does well, beats a couple out, foxes them. Fires into the bottom right. 2 0 Olympia, two goals for Gavin Hoy. You star. The Warriors are on their way to a maiden victory league title. The fat lady is warming up, ladies and gentlemen. I, don't, I think Pierce might have got beaten at his near post, which a goalkeeper never likes. But Hoy scores himself a brace. He just wanders in. Edge of the six yard box, he's nearly out of play. It's gone near post and Pierce anticipating it across the face of goal and it's just lifted just above his leg, just under his hand and in the back of the net, the Hoy Poloi. Have rolled down from the hills. The beggars have come up from the streets and just to witness what should be an Olympia championship. A few calls for maybe offside, but uh, nowhere near. Nowhere near, says uh, a reliable source. So, good goal for Gavin Hoy. He's been just simply sublime in this one, been all over them. So, uh, the, the Warriors well on top and well on their way to the Victory League title. They've been the best team for, well, you'd almost say all the season. Apart from a couple of little slip-ups, they got nervy, but uh, they'd be deserved victors nonetheless. Oh. And Wadawu has just literally put Gorry down. Broke his ankles, his I think. Basketball uh, terminology as, there. As Gustafsson sends a ball over the top. What do you got, young blood? Gorry goes down. Shaken out of his boots by Wadawu, and Wadawu just strolled past nonchalantly. Shame it didn't end in a goal for Olympia supporters as Pierce pumps it long. Just interested to see if the floodgates open or Olympia just tied up now. They're three goals. As Securus, Pierce with another save to deny him. Well, Pierce specs over the year. <laughs> He's going to have to get put in the next years with these last two saves. Or just have a trophy just for it. Just good saves, mate. Good saves in the last round. 
Are they going to whip it in or play a short corner? Yeah, I'd probably be inclined to just tie it up at the back. You've got three goals to play with. Isles swings it into the box. No one really attacking it hard. Hoy's got it. The dangerous Hoy puts it back across goals. Mulroney clears. You can't see Devonport scoring three goals. It would be an absolute capitulation choke fest if Olympia lost from here. As here's the shake and bake from uh, Wadawu. Oh, around I go. You little yellow and orange witch's hat. There's Sison. Doyen, Sison. Maskeel. Ah, uh, the ginger beard man. I think there was one from Clarence. So I think Chilcott's got him covered in the ginger beard stakes. Woolly, how far can you throw it? Best part of 30 metres. Sison picks up a loose ball. It's not a bad ball, probably just needed that little bit more angle on it. A little bit of fade. Is uh oh. oh I was just skipping through here, it's uh the flag is up. Just delayed the pass a little bit too long there. Yeah, just looking across at McNeely's stance is a little more relaxed than it was at the start of the game. We've got the prophecy making uh, coming at, making an appearance sorry sorry for Doyen doing off the prophecy on Maddie Jordan he's got a few nicknames Jada, Prophecy, Prophecy he's from Somerset so he's got his Somerset nicknames he's got his Devonport nicknames it's a long ball oh Lewis does well and uh, Mulroney says go Bo go Gustafsson. Good feathers does Gustafsson. Lovely ball there by the lettuce farmer. Well, you'd want to be more convincing than that. It comes off though. As Isles. Tweet in from Daryl Matthews, a really good friend of SliceofCheese.net. Only a hashtag Liverpool-like meltdown would see them lose it from here. That's enough out of you, Daryl. <laughs> you're, you're a Liverpool I don't know who man. you are, Daryl, but just pipe down, mate. We're, two, we're six, six points after two games, mate. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to talk about their chances against Arsenal. Let's but uh, you're right, it would be a meltdown. It's not going to happen. Let's no. face it, Olympia are going to be champions of the Victory League and deserve it champions. They've been tremendous throughout the year and probably delivered the best football throughout the season. So they have done well with the stocks they've had to, uh, to stay hot on their heels, but in terms of football uh, and, and who's played the better stuff, I, I think Warriors, hands down for me, they've been the best team throughout the season as Wadawi picks this one up fires probably across to the back post looking for Hoy looking around out a hat trick comes out rip one to your man rip on he when snuck did he on. sneak on he snuck on just while you were uh, talking there who's he on for rip one came on for Dennehy I think yeah, so rip on on for Dennehy yes who was in a bit of strife so fresh legs for Devonport, maybe one last roll of the dice in this second half where yeah. beyond the hour mark so it would be tough to see them not just rule back to two all, but they've got to win this game if South Hobart are any hope. They needed to win 30 nil over at Darcy Street um, to rely on a, a draw getting them the title. That's not going to happen. They're only 2 nil up. So they need a miracle from Devonport, and it's a foul against the Prophecy right now. Jeez, he's got hair just all in his eyes. How do you deal with that? I just football? don't know. Do not know. Well, I know how to deal with it because when I played, I wore a headband because I had Longer than that, I would have thought. Um, now, just to take you back while a sub's being made, Gilly, there's a picture in my head that um, it was the moment when Daniel Brown scored against Olympia to make it 1 0 and uh, put them ahead. And just as they ran past Manny Sakaris, him and Huey Ludford, 
just gave it so there was so much emotion. Rightfully so, there was nothing too malicious in it, but I just... Manny Sakiris, if you can put a goal away here and put the icing on the cake for Olympia, we'll probably think back to that moment and go, well, now's... Who's laughing now, boys? To be fair, Sakiris took it in his stride as well. I saw it with his pro Facebook profile pic. He had a bit of fun with it. Uh, but uh, credit to Olympia, uh, particularly with that as well. They didn't lose focus. They didn't drop their heads too much. Uh, they just kept on winning games. And they, they knew if an opportunity came, they'd strike again. And that's what happened. Rangers really helped them out, you got to say. Uh, I know... George and Marcus may have sent a, a sl cheeky slab or two their way for a, a, for a thank you and, and maybe they'll have a beer tonight because they played a pivotal part in just getting them back on top. But uh, Olympia deserved champions and uh, we've seen a little bit of that on show today. Some tremendous football throughout this season. As Gorey picks it up in the bullseye, sends out wide, looking for Ripon. Love that name, Miles Stills though. Races away. Oh, puts it out in front of Sakiris. He steadies, shoots. Tremendous save from Pierce, but he can't stop Gustafsson, who runs in and taps in. Olympia's third. It's party time here at Warrior Park. Well and truly game over. Gustafsson, in his final game at the club, has de delivered what may be the final nail in Devonport's coffin. And <laughs> Unfortunately, the slice of cheese out, slice of cheese is out for Gustafsson because he got the rig out when he scored. Gilly, he says, "Look at my rig and look at my feathers and all sorts of stuff." And then uh, Jimmy Hordle says, "Look at me, slice of cheese." George Mamakis, he did a victory dance. I saw him. He's very excited. I would be too. Good luck to him. But in effect, Devonport would need to score four goals to rain on the Olympia Parade, and that ain't happening. It's a celebration now by Olympia. They've got, well, I just looked to see how long they had long left, but the uh, Olympia chant has started already over near the canine. And it's, it's pretty much party time. What have we got left, Gilly? 25 minutes left, and it's going to be a celebration, I feel. Well, it's not going to be a celebration by the players yet, but it will be a celebration in the crowd. Crack the ouzo, people. Crack the champagne, crack the ouzo. Forget the dinner tonight, we're going to Federal Street to the uh, the Greek club. It'll be party time. Sorry Gilly, no, we'll go to the dinner first, and then we might head back there later. As uh, Gurry, we'll get back. We'll try to do Devonport every justice in calling the game. Uh, probably, well, probably won't be fair, sorry Devonport. It's got to be a celebration now of Olympia's season. I was just going to say when you were talking about the championship before, when uh, Olympia, they had to stay focused and make sure they took their chance if South Hobart were to falter. Um, you've got to say that the coaching staff have done a fantastic job of keeping a lid on things, just getting the job done from that point, despite what would have been a pretty disappointing couple of losses in a row there to uh, Zebras and South Hobart. But um, I guess all it needs now to figure out what the season is, is Braden Mann going to get those goals that he needs to take the... I'm starting to think not. Maybe it's just not his day. It doesn't sound like it. Here they go again, Olympia. Jordan does well to get in front. They're a very pacey young man, is Jordan. You're not going to beat him in a foot race if he doesn't want to be beaten. He can... It does look like he's laping at times, but geez, you can turn it on if he's uh, needs needs to. Settling it down now, Olympia. Lewis out. There's been a sub now. I'm gonna I'm gonna apologise to Olympia people. I don't know number 18's name. Callan. Is that his first name or his last name, Gilly? What's his first name, Gilly? Jack Callan. A leggy type player. He's come on to enjoy his time. I didn't see he came off. Looks to be a defender. Woolley's come off. No Fandom. changes around the ground. Sorry to interrupt Nico. No changes from around the grounds. Oh, actually, one. Another goal down at the den. 
Rangers absolutely smashing the lines. Five zip. Uh, Who scored that one, Gil? Anderson, shoulder Anderson. Shoulder Anderson. So five zipperoni down at the den. Here's Blizzard looking to make his making him a little bit nervous. Blizzard can't find a way past. Prophecy, no. Thought he was gonna sneak in there. Henry Ripwan. It is rip on Gil, you are pronouncing it correctly. I just like to say rip one. And that's exactly what Gorry tries to do there. It's a speculative effort from range that flies well over the gulps. So the Olympia fans really finding their voice, and why not? They deserve every bit of this. It's been a long, long wait for a lot of these Olympia faithful. 1996, their last senior title, Nico. Their first victory leg title, of course, with the competition only into its third year. And uh, they'll celebrate long and hard into the night, you'd think. You can tell it's been a while because they don't actually have any words to the songs that they're singing. It just seems to be circus, da 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 type uh, bit of work as they go on the attack now. Gustafsson. Here's Luke Isles going to fill his boots. He's hit it low and hard. Oh, it's in the back oh, of the net. Von to the Olympia Warriors. And you're just watching the championship team. Well, the champion team, I should say. Oh, it does everything right. Pierce sticks out a boot, but he can't do anything about it. And the floodgates are starting to open for Devonport. They're going to look forward to a big bus trip home and uh, to do some good work on the way home. But Olympia Warriors, ladies and gentlemen. There's lots of hands shaking and back slapping and rightfully so. They, uh, they're going to be some sore cheeks very soon. There's so much smiling. There's horns and stuff going on. And There's another substitute. Lettuce Farmer's got some lettuces to pick. He goes off. And Gilly, you got to help me out with these subs here. Di Martino of the Christian variety. Di Martino, Di Martino, Di Martino. He's come on for party time. Sison now, prophecy to Chilcot all around. Variety. Isles now, it's out to Hoy, Hoy to Isles, it's just party trick time, you can see they've relaxed, you can see that their football's flowing now and um, let's hope the substitutes can get in on the act somewhere along the line just to sweeten it even more, as Dom Smith, Wadawu holds him up, he's gone into the rig, Blizzard under close, well Blizzard's got five people standing around him so playing it into Blizzard. Manny Sakiris, he wants a goal, surely. He'd love a goal. He's, he he's, to he's toiled hard today, and obviously in pursuit of uh, the golden boot, he's a fair few off, and so is Braden Mann. I think a lot of people thought it was Braden Mann's to lose, despite being a goal behind coming into the round, but yet to score over at South Hobart. McEwen scored one, so... Um, he uh, leads the Golden Boot by two at this stage. I so wouldn't rule man out just yet. No. Against Milwaukee Knights with about 17 minutes to go. As long as there's an, I'd say, less goals than minutes to be scored, <laughs> I reckon he's a sniff. Off. He can give up. And it's uh, pumped long and strong. Picked up in midfield by Gorry. He's brought down free kick. So more or less uh, just about soaking up the minutes now for these Warriors. They, um, especially the substitutes. Jeez, Mulroney, like Mulroney will he hit? Oh no, sorry there, Gilly. I thought Mulroney was going to pull something out of the. Well, it fell to his left boot, so I shouldn't have been so silly. Probably never struck a decent ball on his left foot in his life. Yeah, so it's all simply mathematic from mathematics from here. Um, because the title is sewn up, 
is heading to Warrior Park. Jubilant fans scattered throughout the fortress that is Warrior Park. It has been a fortress for them this season. They haven't lost a game over here. This is picked up from Wadawu, from Sison to Smith. Just dinked along nicely from Wadawu, but the wind holds it up a little bit. Gustafsson goes to collect it. Probably gives up on it a little bit too easy. Thought he was going to get a foul. Driven long to rip on. Never mind his efforts. Plays back for the big Red Rock. Chilcott. Long and strong it goes. It races away. Blizzard might be able to retrieve. The line will beat him. He's cut an isolated figure up top for Devonport today. Yeah, but one, plot, one of their very few positives in a fairly bleak season. Isn't that the case, Nick? Gale? He has. He's improved steadily over the season. He was good at the start. And he's, uh, he's done a power of work. And Bobby Eves heaped praise on him last week. And rightfully so. He's had a pretty good season. He's only a young fella, 17. He maybe should start looking at trying his hand over in the... A bit better league. He probably might need one more year in the Victory League. Might do enough to spark someone's attention. There's a hickey now, looking to celebrate. I don't know how many titles it stacks. It's just got. If you look him up on Wikipedia, it's just got stacks of titles. Titles for fun. 6-0 down at the den, by the way. Rangers absolutely spanking the suitcase out of Kingborough. Who's uh, scored that one? Shoulder Anderson. Shoulder Anderson so coming, he's, he's coming up. Rich vein of form to finish, yeah. Yes. So it's uh, driven along by Pierce beyond halfway. Bounces away. Vandermeer will pick this one off and find Lewis. We make no mistake. Bring it out to left. To Callan. No, it's Nichols rather. He lays back for Lewis and long and strong it goes off the boot of Vandermeer. And Pierce will pick this one up. So 77 minutes, but the game is well and truly done and dusted. As is the season, Nico. Olympia FC Warriors well in control of this one and they will win the title. When uh, only a fortnight ago, all hope looked lost. It's long down the line. It's picked up by a rip on. He nips inside. It's Blizzard who keeps it moving Devonport's way. And Vandermate makes sure it goes no further and sends it on to the sheds at Warrior Park. Just don't know if we can do it justice, Gilly. It's, I mean, for this club to to ride the highs and lows of the last 20 years without a um, without a men's a senior men's title or the, the top top level. Um, just for the, I mean, we, we don't link clubs with ethnicities anymore, but uh, I don't think anyone can deny that the, the Greeks in, um, in Hobart are heavily linked to this club, and to have 20 years without success or, uh, you know, a championship, this will be massive. It's going to go off. It will go off. Braden Mann has just netted has at he? South Hobart. So he's still one behind, though, with McEwen also scoring today so what minute did that occur in 65th Joy? so he's got himself 25 minutes to uh, perhaps salvage something he will know the situation is Securus is this his goal oh. he's put it home wide again and Securus he's got himself into some good positions but it's just the final little dink over the top that hasn't found the back of the net he won't be too disappointed knowing that uh, there's nothing actually riding on these efforts anymore. He might be disappointed when he finds out that uh, he probably only needed, if he needed three of those opportunities, he's had three very good opportunities. He might have found himself with a little bit of personal silverware, but uh, really he wouldn't care about that. I don't think. Well, he might. I don't know. As Riggy picks up the ball here, Smith, Gorry. Finds Maskeel. Just playing out the game. They've been dispossessed here. This could be a danger again for Devonport. It's a nice little dink over the top to Securis, but Uluru is in the way. He made a bit of a name for himself last time he was here. He was in denying 
Olympia on numerous occasions last time. He hasn't probably had the quite the same effect in this game, but he's just getting himself a bit of camera time. Sison, is it his last game for the club? We'd probably think so. Same with Maskeel. Have you found their seasons, Nico? Obviously, uh, imports have a big job to do when they come into these victory leg sides. So. They do. They're both good players. Uh, have they stood out over the top of the, the rest of the team? Probably not. Not in the same way, at least, that uh, uh, Callum Moore did last year. They're definitely not of his calibre, I wouldn't have thought. More solid citizens than they are, doing yeah, a good job. Solid citizens. Just looking at a few tapes during the week that have uh, potential couple of Spaniards that have been playing in America. They looked not too bad. The Pommy videos, no good. That was horrible. So uh, maybe some Spanish flavour next season for the strikers. I do not know. As Luke Oles oh, skips past three or four, but he coughs the ball up. Rig Douglas to Uluru to the chicken man, Kieran Mulroney. Devonport will be a long old trip, won't it? Uh, yes. But also, they'll be uh, probably leaning off some steam after a long season. I might. Well, you would think. You would think. Although the bus would be a little bit depleted with a few players staying for the dinner. I know the imports are staying for the dinner. I'm not sure who else. Of course, some trouble, no doubt. Turtle Holden might be a, a sniff for the dinner tonight, you'd think. He's a player that's really stood up in a, uh, a poor side uh, in terms of performance this season. And we saw in the first year of the Victory League, uh, that's how Jaden Hay got his medal. But uh, maybe he's a sniff. What do you reckon? Yep, he's a sniff. I'm not sure. He's. Uh, I just think with the uh, seventh position... Might be a little bit too low down, but you're right, that's what Jaden Hay did. They finished in seventh that year, and he just picked up every vote that Knight's got. As we've got a score update, McEwen with another goal. Just before that wall, just so Zebras, oh, geez, Zebras have a lead. Have a lead. This is, uh, another goal to McEwen. Lead four, three. And Braden Man's day has gone from bad to worse. That's uh, 3 0. We have a sub. <laughs> now you know it's party time when you sub your keeper. Yeah, and uh, Nest has probably been at the club for, I don't know, he's been here a while, I think, uh, Gilly. It's probably a um, uh, join in in the uh, party, uh, Dimitri. There we go, Marcus doing his work on the microphone. Dimitri Nesta will retire after this game, so what a way to go out, really. Braden Mann with another. Ooh, it's heating up the Golden Boot race. But uh, it's all uh, secondary news compared to uh, the news that Olympia Warriors will be the champions. As soon as probably you've got 10 minutes until time ticks over maybe two minutes of injury time with the substitutes there's Hickey, will they score another? it's a lovely ball by Hickey who's that found Hoy? probably man of the match Hoy can't do much there now the votes from the Wilder Police Media Award of votes will count for today is that right Gil? let's hope so yeah they will but they'll just be uh, in secret of and, course and yes. that one's uh, not being announced tonight no, at the we're having a special. We're having our own special dinner for the Wilder Police Media. Award. At the request of the great man Walter Pless, he didn't want it done at the dinner. He didn't oh, want to really? didn't want to detract from the main event. What? So uh, it's going to be done separately uh, next week. Yeah, a media conference for that one. Um, In Devonport or down this way? Well, it depends who gets up. <laughs> oh no, that's a fair question. The throwing comes down the line from Smith, brought down by Mulroney. He looks to get by Di Martino, gets involved, finds with Dawu. Di Martino with some fireworks to finish, cannons it into Mulroney and out for a throw in. Off memory, I'm not sure too many Devonport players were in the running for the uh, for the Wilder Plus Award, so it'd be something special if someone got up from the last time we did votes, but you just never know. You never know. 
Uh, the lines of peg one back, 6 1 down at the den. So, City have relinquished the lead as we said a little bit earlier. They were up 3 1, they're now trail fourth rate, which would be disappointing for City, but the, geez, they've had some sort of season considering where they started at. Cons their last two seasons, well, this year they've collected more points than the last two combined and some. As it comes down the line, Hoy loses it. Maskell looks to find his countryman in Sison, gets away from him and out for a throw in. Isles in for Gustafsson off the chest of Sison. It's Gorry who does well to round a couple. Drop off to Douglas. Still going strong. He'll have to run out the night. He'd be rigged. Don't know whether he'd be too happy with that. Oh, you can do it all, Riggy. Oh! Ooh. Gorry with a lovely little sizzling strike, but it's. Didn't have any dip on it, which it needed. Just seemed to keep sailing. Just, just over flicked it at the back. Would have been a nice little way to... Might have been a goal of the year contender too. It wouldn't have been because you can't get it. Run harp on that gilly though. There's Blizzard. Zebras with another Nico, 5-3. They've really turned it on. Not McEwen. Not McEwen, Not McEwen. it's <laughs> As Maskell ventures forward. Here. Smith down the line to Maskill. And it's uh, Badawu who makes sure of it and puts it out of play. Could right. be best on uh, Maskill tonight at the at the Mitzi. About Mitzi to say, I'd probably say Hoy's oh, been best on in this game. But yeah, well, big Maskill will look for his work at the Mitzi. Yeah, keep a sharp eye on that man. From just leads, leadsy type bloke. He's uh, just just the hard liquor. He'll love it. You wait. I'm not sure you'll have to drink it at the Mitzi, but afterwards, as Hoy secures his venturing offside, if he gets the ball, Hoy holds it up. No secures too well. Probably thought he was drifting offside. Gustafsson, his last minutes for the club. Oh, barring. Uh, Will he be here for the uh, Victory Cup, Gilly, or is he... Gustafsson? Yeah. No, he's actually heading off. So this is his last hurrah, and what a hurrah it is. Oh. Helping them lift the title. It's a foul against Hoy. Well, if you win the league, the Victory Cup's probably just a little bit of icing, really, so... Oh, honestly, yeah. Uh, it's a bit of cash to play for, but I don't yeah. think the players are too stressed about that. Yeah. Obviously, still aware that the other clubs will... Want to get their hot little hands on, but uh, Olympia, this is... Look at that man. Who would have thought Shay Hickey would be the man instrumental in so many titles? He's just a diminutive little dwarf-type <laughs> hobbit man, <laughs> but he's the linchpin. He is the linchpin, and he's been the linchpin for a number of years in a number of premiership sides. A lot of the times you, you see him wincing and and uh, battling through, but you see... Um, he is a quality footballer. As Gustafsson robs it off Pierce, but enough Devonport numbers there to wrestle it back and see it clear. Oh, we might have another update. Just the second best out in the field. Oh, Braden man, man next with a third. third game. Well, they're level at the top of the Golden Boot. Parity with minutes left. What will happen? Securus might just net four in the last three minutes and stuff them all up. Wadawu, dispossessed by the rig. Chilcott to Smith. Love Smith's season. He has played well and truly better than his years would suggest. Probably more a centre back as well. I don't think he's playing in his best position. Will be a leader for years to come. Only turned 17 this year, I think. It's a uh, rip one, nearly snuck on the end of one there. We're into the 89th, and you wouldn't think there'd be too much added time, Nico. Though I think Jimmy Hortle will be kind to the Olympia fans and let the celebration start. What a season it has been for the Warriors. We've been. Uh, Hyped up for many a year leading into this year, of course, Summer Cups, they've collected a few of them in recent times, but there's been nothing but a pre-season tease up until this season, and really, 
They've led for the bulk of the season. They've played the finest football, and they'll be deserved champions. And Glenn McNeil, a few draps have to go to him and, and George Marks and how Olympia have turned around the club, because not long ago they were in the relegation zone in the Southern Premier League. Have you got the team sheet there, Gil? Because I'm pretty sure not all those people are on the, on the uh, bench at the moment for Olympia who look to be kidding up in their very own uh, Olympia Championship uh, get-up. There's some sneaky T-shirts going on, Gil. Someone's done some work before the game. They've bought out the fresh kit for the photos. Offside by Sakiris. There's T-shirts going on, there's hats going on, they're bouncing up and down, and who can blame them? Good on them. There's going to be an eruption. There's going to be an almighty eruption, and uh, one that they all deserve. And Can Sakiris top it Sekiris, off? No. Oh, he looks to get on the score sheet. He couldn't not, blow out a candle at not the his moment. <laughs> not his day today, Sakiris, but he got one. Picked up from Sison along from Mulroney to Gorry. To run across is Vanamay who sweeps it clear. He's been good at the back, assisted. Just the all important opener. As the camera pans across, look at the bench. It's not going to. We're just get, checking out the top. Over the, forget look about it. the game. There's little look going on. Get over to the. Don't worry about it. Get it. Let's get over to the Premiership shirts. They've lined look up. Them, look at that. Up. They've got the work done. Oh, I love this. I love it from Olympia. I suppose when you've waited so long for silverware, it, it means so much more, doesn't it, Nico? It and does uh, indeed. Not that I'd know. I don't know what it means. I've never <laughs> <laughs> I so think I'm, I'm in uh, Matthew Rhodes' territory. I want to reserve Summer Cup. <laughs> That's about as good as it got for me. As Gary swings it in, this will be the end of the game shortly after this. Here we go. Jimmy Horton will just prolong it a little bit longer. Probably should have just blamed the whistle there, Jimmy, but uh, doing the right thing. There's probably two minutes of injury time, and we're going to see every second of them. So we're just waiting for that final whistle, Nico. Just hope our camera person uh, has ready a for the good understanding the of where <laughs> George Mamarcus is for this. And he'll probably be near the bench somewhere. Jimmy Hordle. Looked like he wanted to blow it then. He's looked at his watch a thousand times and here we go, Olympia fans. 2015 Victory League champions. Oh, Olympia Warriors. And the bench yeah. empties. They empty, Nico. An eruption of sweet joy. Olympia FC Warriors haven't had a senior title since 1996. And here it is. They are champions of Tasmanian football. They all pile on and celebrate what has been the season to end many, many years without silverware. Deserved victors. 4-0 win over Devonport today. Far too good. And they'll celebrate long and hard into the night. Well... The bubbles, it only took 30 seconds for the bubbles to open up. And we'll just, I don't need to speak too much here. You can hear them go at it. Just a mosh pit of Olympia love. That's all it is. We've got. They're going to go again. <laughs> 
Nico, we might just leave it here for us and just let Olympia do the talking. Why, well, would you speak? Just In Jeff Kennett style. <laughs> George Marcus on the mic. Let him go. Let's just let him have it. Thanks for joining us here at SizeOfCheese.net. We'll be back with all the Victory Cup action. For now, let's let Olympia celebrate. They are 2015 PlayStation 4 Victory League champions.